role of mathematics and engineering as well as in real life well, this is one of the questions asked in the community post where i was asking like ask your questions and i kind of missed it in the last art podcast but this is a really beautiful question by krish gupta 963 now i've been pursuing engineering for the last 11 years now i started my undergraduation in mechanical engineering in 2012 uh somewhere in between i worked in the nuclear sector in the space sector um i have also gone through a masters level program in nuclear science and engineering got a training in space science and engineering by by isro uh, the prior one was by department of atomic energy so i've been going through some heavy stuff when it comes to engineering and i have seen the extent of mathematics that you see in a lot of cases in research as pretty brutal and the same goes with other branches of engineering as well and the same is the case for mechanical engineering so i can divide it to what extent you are going to need your mathematics when we are talking about undergraduate level you are going to need the basic mathematics that you study in uh, in undergraduate it's like don't think that whatever mathematics that you are studying is kind of useless it is useless if you study engineering but ultimately do not pursue the career of engineering which is a completely different deal but let us take an example of mechanical engineering itself if you are studying mechanical engineering and i think in most of the colleges in india there's like uh, four semesters of mathematics uh, even in america i think uh, you would be taking some courses in mathematics at least 2 to 3 uh starting from the basic mathematics linear algebra to calculus these are the things that you would be studying maybe numerical methods probability stuff like that uh but when you type engineering mathematics and the subjects and the topics that are covered over there in any of the classic engineering level books those are the topics that would be important in a sense that it will be helpful for you to understand different subjects of engineering so mathematics of engineering is not directly used by engineers it is used as a tool to understand the subjects of engineering better let us take an example of say heat transfer so if you have ever studied heat transfer i took this topic because mechanical engineers would be able to understand chemical engineers would be able to understand it's a simple topic i think to a huge extent people study it even in senior secondary the conduction right so there's a law called fourier's law of conduction so you are going to take a tiny element of length dx to derive that and uh, you need to understand how dt by dx is showing you the gradient of temperature across the length and that's basic calculus that you're using over there i understand how important calculus becomes over here is because i did not study mathematics that seriously till my senior secondary sorry high school yeah that's the same thing and i had to study it properly when i got into engineering college because i was not understanding any of the core mechanical engineering subjects without calculus and calculus is extremely important i think to a huge extent you can skip linear algebra maybe you will be needing it if you study like high level subjects like vibration finite element methods and all uh, but calculus you cannot skip because most of the engineering expressions or theorems are derived straight from there like even if you are going to derive bernoulli's equation you are going to need that and uh, it's highly used in mechanics of solid as well strength of material you might know it as and uh, for example deflection of beams that utilizes calculus um there's an equation where when you are going to differentiate load uh you are going to get shear stress when you differentiate that you're going to get bending moment and like that you have to understand how differentiation is working and how differentiation of a particular quantity gives another quantity in a similar manner like a differentiation of uh, displacement is going to give you velocity right so 
it starts to show up in your physics of senior secondary as well and it is going to utilize the mathematics that you're going to study in senior secondary so mathematics is important but in what sense like it is not a surface level important like you are not going to be doing any engineering application where you are going to directly use it like you are using calculus when you are designing a car that is not going to happen you are going to use principles that will help you to design a component of a car and those principles will be having underlying mathematics and uh, that's what you need to understand it is important but why it is important so maybe a lot of students face this problem that when they are studying mathematics they don't see the application directly very few teachers actually teaches mathematics in that sense and uh, this is what i found beneficial in barc training school which was basically a masters level training program of one year we call it ocs or orientation program so degree in nuclear science and engineering so the benefit that i had over there was that uh, scientists who are basically engineers uh, they took our courses on mathematics and that another place where it was named engineering mathematics so they taught us in a way that this is how you are going to apply it in research and that's what i want to talk about as well that mathematics becomes extremely important when you're pursuing a research based career now it might be an industrial research or an academic research and when it comes to academic research it starts kind of as soon as you get into your masters most of your masters program is going to involve some level of research so the moment you get there you are going to use mathematics to a preposterous amount i mean the jump is pretty significant from undergraduate level mathematics to masters level mathematics it's just next level masters level mathematics is almost like a phd level mathematics because in us universities you will even see like it is just a graduate program doesn't matter if you're doing a masters or a phd the coursework is same and a lot of people from masters convert into phd a lot of phd's drop out with a masters as well but it's basically the same curriculum uh, but that undergraduate versus graduate mathematics there's a significant jump and it is mind boggling to me a lot of times as well the amount of mathematics that comes if you go for higher studies so um i think as an engineer you should go for a graduate program confidently if you are very good with mathematics matter of fact if you are going to go for at least i can say this for mechanical engineering if you are going to go for a um path of academic path like academia where you are going to go for a masters maybe directly phd then maybe postdoc and then maybe trying to be a professor that's like pure theoretical university research a lot of times it is not theoretical but it is i said theoretical because it is a lot different from industrial research so when you are going in that path mathematics becomes extremely important and i see those people who are having good sound base with mathematics excel in that field they are going to attain a good phd if they are having good base with mathematics and uh, if like you're a chemical engineer or a mechanical engineer or an aerospace engineer if you want to see what is the level of mathematics that i'm talking about you should start to study computational fluid dynamics or finite element method those are like pure cut application of mathematics and engineering and that's a very good litmus test if you're fit for this research career or not because either that mathematics will be fun for you and i would say that that would be less than 1% of the population or it is just like i can't do this this is like too much and uh, those are the people who do not pursue a career in research or proper like academia uh or at least they should not a lot of them even if they don't want to they are still stuck with it but uh, that's mathematics and proper engineering when it comes to like uh, real life 
Ty, as an engineer who has been pursuing engineering for last 11 years, I don't use mathematics in the day-to-day basis. That might also be because the way my brain is tuned. I use engineering a lot. All around me, I see engineering every place. That is very beneficial. I can explain things physically using engineering. I don't use calculus (laughs) on my daily basis, but uh, then again, that might be because I'm not that math oriented. I've always been terrible at mathematics, but I was able to just learn enough mathematics to do good in engineering. That's also a pathway. And the only reason I'm taking my example over here is because that is also a way that you can just get by with having sound understanding, only okay, okay understanding. So if you have a poor base in senior secondary, and just like I explained, I I did not study much until high school. So I had like a 53 out of 100 in my uh, 12th board mathematics. So you can judge just by that, like it's not a good score. Uh, but I had a nine point, what was that? Five seven uh, CGPA out of ten. In undergraduation, I was able to get selected as a scientific officer in Department of Atomic Energy. I was also selected for masters in Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, um, uh, for for a masters in design or thermal. They gave me that option. And I was later on also selected in Indian Space Research Organization for the scientist position. So in all of these places, I played my engineering well. And that engineering was backed up with okay, okay mathematics. So the way that I studied mathematics was basically reversed. So I saw a particular concept in engineering, let us say heat transfer, fluid mechanics, or strength of material. And then I studied and strengthened that particular concept. And then I saw the application right away. And so I was able to both understand the math behind that concept well, and I was able to master the concept in a way that I was able to apply it further. So that's where you need mathematics. Like if you want to apply a concept or a theorem, you need to understand the inception of that concept and the inception of that concept is generally in mathematics. So that's how uh, mathematics is important for engineering. Other than that, there are so many people getting by through life without mathematics, without engineering. They're in a completely different career. But when it comes to engineering, I think math is extremely important. Uh, But to what level, right? And that also depends to what level you want to go. Like If you want to go for graduate programs, uh, I would just warn you right now, there would be a very significant jump in the level of mathematics that is expected. Uh, you can still get by. I don't think you can completely get by through your PhD uh, without exceptional level of mathematics. Either you have to be extremely good in mathematics, you have to learn how to be better at it, or you have to drop out from that program. And that's going to happen sooner or later. Uh, but I think till masters, you can get by. I mean, you can pass the courses, at least that that's what I have uh, seen from my experience. Um but yeah, it would be pretty challenging just by uh, taking a look at it. If you look at any like, uh, even if you just uh, go past the undergraduation level of heat transfer, um, the master's level, I think, generally starts from transient state. And that's where you start to see a lot of like mathematics, like separation of variables and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, pretty complicated. So take a look. I mean, you can take a look by taking a look at the book, which a lot of people don't like to do anymore. So take a look at uh, Incropera, take a look at uh, Sanjil maybe, take a look at Timoshenko, good books, um, and uh, see where the concepts of undergraduations are explained in which chapter and see how it goes like um a good example of strength and because we have passed that 10 minute mark i believe so <laughs> i can explain a little bit more for mechanical engineers uh, we study thin pressure vessels in our undergraduation and we do very simple mathematics to understand how we derive the hoop stress and radial stress um i think the good understanding or you can understand it better when you start to take a look at the derivation of thick pressure vessels pressure vessels i always mess up that word so thick pressure vessel uh, derivation if you take a look at it how it is done that is graduate level thin pressure vessel is undergraduate level um 
But just in case you are more interested in developing a career in industry, uh, most of the stuff that you need to know to excel well in industry, and that includes the highest level of job interviews, uh, they can all be dealt with with your undergraduation understanding, including the mathematics. And uh, PhD or graduate level interviews are completely different. So that is very specialized towards, okay, you have to do this. So show me excellence in this particular narrow field that you have spent your five years of PhD in. So that's completely different. But most of the jobs that you're going to see through undergraduation or masters, most of the time people who are done with their masters, they sit for the same openings, which are for undergraduation. Uh, you are going to be good to go with your undergraduation level understanding of engineering and mathematics because uh, most of the interviewers will not go beyond that. So I hope that this gives you a good understanding of how much you need mathematics and uh, the value and also uh, the limitations of it. I hope it was helpful. I'm going to end this video over here. I think I can also upload it as a podcast. It's a small one, but yeah, those who just want to listen it. And that's about it. See you next time. Till then, bye.